The start of the Antship Saga was in 1924. I was enrolled at the Royal Military College Sandhurst for a two-year course, and my mother and sisters, Joyce and Rosemary, went on a world tour. With no aeroplanes, only ship and train, this was scheduled to take two years. At the conclusion of this tour, my elder sister was to make her debut in London. While in Western Australia, a relation took them out to Yanship Beach. My mother, who had a great pioneering spirit, fell in love with it. The land was originally given to the Midland Railway as a grant for building the railway to Geraldton. My mother bought from Lake Pippendini to just above what is now Sun City. This, of course, included the 40-acre reserve at the beach. In extent, it was about four and a, 14 and a half miles from north to south, seven miles across at the south end, and two and a half at the north end. In all, about 23,000 acres too big to be a farm and not big enough for a station, so Yanship Estate came into being. In the Australian summer of 1926, the start of building the house saw my mother and sisters camped in tents while the house was erected. The design was simple. In the center, um, two equally sized rooms, one the dining room and the other the drawing room, and they led out of each other. On the seaside, there were four bedrooms, alternately eight foot by ten and ten foot by ten, and this was repeated on the inland side, with the exception of the last two on the dining room end. Um, the large room in the corner was the kitchen and the smaller one next to it the storeroom. As the track out from Perth was a rather fearsome undertaking it had to be kept very complete. Perhaps here the road should be mentioned. Although my first leave get there was in 1927, as far as I can recollect, just on from the North Perth Hotel, the track started, and as far as Tuart Hill, it was good. Either planks to fit the wheels of a car or cart, and then slices of tree trunks sunk into the sand in the same way as the planks. From then on, it was sand, sand, and for a variety, sand again. The 37 miles had been known to take as much as ten and a half hours, with a truck loaded with household stores, petrol and wire, and other fit, fit fencing or windmill needs. To return to the house, as with the exception of my mother's bedrooms, all the others had two beds. At weekends, anyway, there were always about 11 persons in residence. The house was situated just north of the reserve in a small hollow which had the benefit of a shallow well with wonderful water, um, obtainable by a donkey tail pump. When I took up permanent residence in 1937, I put tanks in the hill and a mill and we had running water. At the start, basic furnishing, apart from beds, was made out of petrol boxes and petrol tins. There were two four-gallon tins of petrol in each wooden case and with the side of the tin cut out and replaced in the box without its top, you had ready-made drawers. Even with a handle, 
um, where the petrol tins could have been lifted before they were converted. The boxes could be added to each other upright or sideways and so you had a variety of shapes of furniture. Later on, gradually, dressing tables, wardrobes and other uh, furnishings were gradually introduced. <laughs>